All right, hey guys, it's Ray from the Teach Better team. And we are live after Mastery Chat, actually all in one room. And we are with future teachers from Illinois State University. So they're gonna go around and introduce themselves. And I'm gonna check that you can hear us uh, over on Facebook, because hopefully this is all working. So will you guys end up um, sharing your name, what you're getting endorsed in, and uh, maybe where you're from would be really great. Who wants to go first? Go ahead. I'm John Williams. I'm endorsed in ELA and social sciences, and I'm originally from Seneca, Illinois, home of the Fighting Irish. <laughs> um, I can go next. I'm um, Joshua Plank. I am endorsed in uh, English and science, and I guess I went to high school in Gibson City, Illinois, so I guess that's probably closest to where I'm from. My name is Sara Kujelitz. Changing that last name soon, so it's fine. <laughs> right now, it's Miss K. Um, my endorsements are on well, middle level. My endorsements are um, English, uh, English language learning, uh, this social science, and is also um, reading K through twelve. So a bit of an overachiever. <laughs> I try. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to ask at Amos Lanzo Stag High School in Palos, and then I also went. I graduated in my senior year from Lincoln Midwest. I'm Emma Novotny. I am studying middle level education at ISU. I'm from Naperville, Illinois, and my endorsements are in social studies and language arts. I'm Joe Bajork, um, middle level two, and I'm getting endorsed in math and science, and I'm from the small town of Foxborough Grove. I'm Katie Starkey. Um, I am the level as well. I am going to be endorsed in social science and science, and I am from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm Madeline Friend. I'm also middle level with math and science endorsements, and I'm from Creefport, Illinois, but it's very schools. Nice. So these are overachievers of the ISU class that I get to co-teach with Valley Lutheran. So when all y'all are looking for uh, candidates for teaching, I got these and about 20 more for all of you. They need amazing jobs, so that's just my shout out for them. Looks like Jeff Gargas is saying that he can hear us and Don Epps is here, so we can all say hello to Don. Um, we actually hosted this chat a little bit for the moment. You learned everything tonight, is that true? Yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> would you mind kind of talking about the process of getting started, getting prepared to host this chat because we essentially walked into class and we're like, we're hosting a Twitter chat on lesson planning. Let's get started. So will you give us some details? What were your experiences? What do you think? Um, well, I mean, you can kind of see the details on the board behind us where we just thought of a bunch of different questions and we cut them down and we reworded them and then we put them in an order. I mean, it was fun. I mean, we ate pizza at the same time, so that's always a plus. It was, sure. um, for someone who loves social, like, um, social learning and like discovery learning and just kind of talking, uh, it was a hodgepodge of just everyone just talking and like everyone having ideas and it was just like a non-stop roll. Mm -hmm. It was a ball that never stopped rolling. It, it was, was nice. There was a lot of, you had to interpolate and interpolate and keep going and boiling it and boiling it down and eventually it took, it took an hour and a half to get <laughs> yeah, 10 and, questions. And there was, the board was never empty, which is like, come on guys, that, that, that never happened. Mm -hmm. So what were some questions, let's start first, what were some questions that you wanted to ask but maybe we said eh, not not good for the twitter chat do you remember any of them that we were like no nah, we won't ask that tonight we erased all of them very quick yeah i mean my question made it so mine was about uh are you bragging that your question made it well no <laughs> it was it was about the time management or, or using your time in the lesson plan but i don't know if anybody else said one but we had to yeah. modify it we did change it yeah yeah um i know there was a lot of questions about like the relationship between standards and learning objectives mm -hmm. and like what what exactly that's supposed to be and and how we're supposed to, I, that we had a lot of those and I don't think any of those made it and that was topical because you guys were discussing that in another course mm -hmm. so that was kind of top of mind as you were trying to talk about lesson planning which makes sense so for the questions that actually did make it was there one that you were really excited about kind of hearing people's feedback from the how to get and incorporate student input into a lesson. Nice. Any others? I wanted to hear like the best and the worst lessons. <laughs> yes. What not to do and what to do. All right, well, I want to talk more about that. We have Jackie saying that she loves the question, so she's very proud of you. And Tammy, who is in Mexico, said that you guys did an awesome job and she really enjoyed the chat. 
And Brandon, who's an ISU alum, also really loved what you guys did. Um, let's talk about those best and worst stories. You put those as separate questions intentionally because everyone in the class is like, we want to hear this as many stories as possible. So with that being said, did you hear any stories that were very much worth a laugh? I don't want to call people out. <laughs> no, you got it. This is live. This is us <laughs> recapping. So those people that are watching either participate in the chat and just want to hear your feedback, or they didn't participate, but they want to still gain the same insight. So share your favorites. Okay, well, one of my favorites was probably the underwear one. <laughs> they did the laundry. I don't know. I can't remember who exactly it was, but they did their laundry and like a like an extra piece of underwear was stuck in the pant leg and it like fell out. I don't know who this oh, was. No. <laughs> um, but then there's also one about breaking a desk, and I'm very clumsy. Like, I, we're only in our first round of, like, internships, and I've already, like, tripped over desks. I've tripped over cords, and I've just embarrassed myself, which the students get a kick out of it, and I kind of incorporate that in my lesson just as a funny option for them to be learning and having fun while we're learning. So I think that it's awesome to hear about, like, the embarrassing stories, but then now you can laugh about it. Like, I'm sure you're mortified if underwear falls out of your pant leg. I would have been, but <laughs> now it's funny to laugh about. Yeah. It's only funny if they're like granny panties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you that, they're like, oh, I'm definitely going to get fired. <laughs> yeah, I guess depending on what they were, that could change things a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess one of my, the one that, that sticks out in my head, like the worst, was um, almost the over planning for the pumpkins. For the, yeah. the pumpkins oh, they, all it. they all brought it. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't think I saw that one. That, that was yeah, a, was a teacher yeah. bought, she was doing like a fifth sensory. A lesson, yeah. and she bought a bunch of pumpkins three weeks in advance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think that's what it was. I mean, I get it. it was, I, I had pumpkins like rot on me within like a week of buying them, so like I get it. But dang, mm -hmm. she was ready. Three weeks yeah, she was like, so, what are other questions that we asked that you guys felt like you got good responses to? Anything specifically stick out as a tweet that you'll always remember, or something that you were like, ah, this is what I needed. This was helpful. I think just like overall people were sharing all different kind of like modems and ways they go about either sharing information with other teachers or information with their students or just like tools that they use in the classroom. So that was really cool to see the different tools that we would be able to all kind of try, even if we hadn't heard of them. Oh, so I love the, the, the ones that were like sharing. They're like, oh, hey, I use this tool and here's their Twitter handle. Oh, I yes. love those. Yeah. I was just like, thank you. I could use, because I, I have like a folder of resources and there's just, Incredibly long of like in my like on my laptop I'm like bookmarks. I just have so many different like resources and the more that like, keep them coming to me Like I need them. Yeah, that's really good way to collect resources. Oh. So our comment so far. Uh, sorry, Jeff I did check my phone. Sorry that scroller was going off. Sorry. Um, I love Katie's saying uh, way to introduce them to fabulous world of Twitter. Yes, they were were you nervous? Yes. yes. They were nervous, <laughs> but they did good. It's a lot of sensory input when you're like refreshing. It's like 40 more. You kind of want to go through them all, but you're like, yeah. It gave me like flashbacks back when like Facebook group chats were new. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, like, you had like 30 people in one group chat with all your friends, and it was just like, what's going on? Yeah. Yes. The best part is it is safe, so you can always go back to it. Uh, Becky says, you. oh, that's funny, Becky. Thank you. I'm glad that they were a part of my classroom. Um, so I love that Ray threw at them. Nice, it's true. Is it? It's true. All right. So um, any other elements that you saw a tweet and you were like, "Oh, I really loved this part," or "I really appreciated this resource," or this comment? The gift game was pretty good. <laughs> of course, I saw one on meditation. Mm -hmm. Oh, on yoga. As it was a bell ringer, and she was like, "We're gonna, we're gonna have the students meditate to get into the right mind," and I'm like. Never thought I do enjoy meditation, but I never thought you could bring that to the classroom. And then she replied and she gave me a link to a book that she uses on how and specifically how to use meditation in the classroom. Nice. Can you like, read that so I can see it? Yeah, I, I can. And that was there's just something I never thought about. Absolutely. I really enjoy it. Do you remember the book name by chance? Or are you gonna have to share that with everything? Oh, I can retweet it. Yeah, you'll share it everybody. That'll so be much. great. Yeah, I'm trying to remember all the stuff. I mean like one thing is just a good reminder is that we can't do everything and it's good to sort of pace yourself you know mm -hmm. instead of like put, spread yourself too thin and then you just crumble so it's yeah. always good to remember that there were two um i don't remember what questions they were trying to ask to answer but there were two of them that i really like there was one that um started off with um how important like they might i don't necessarily call them bell 
rigors, but like I do make sure that there's like a small activity in the beginning of the classroom to make sure that like the like again the right mindset, like kind of building off of that, like getting everyone together, starting the class together, and then so like I really like that. I, I mean, I taught a lesson the other day and I forgot to do the bell ringer, and it, like in just one of the class, and like the difference between like classroom management was so so big. Yeah. Especially if that could mess with your routine if you forget that moment. Yeah, and yeah. this movie is literally like a two, like not even like a two minute thing, but like it offset the rest of the class because I didn't, I, I didn't properly do the bell ringer. I just like, all right, let's go. Got a lot of things to do. Well, that and also the exit slip, how important that is because you might have taught a lesson you thought it would re went really well, I knocked it out of the park, and then you get an exit slip and they're way off base. And that's when you have to go, hmm, maybe I need to revisit this and change some things up. So it's, important to have that too. Very important. That's why I like class, like workshop set up classroom mm -hmm. rather than like to the test mm -hmm. classes. So tell me about what it was like being on Twitter. You obviously were kind of thrown into a whirlwind and you hosted a very successful chat trending nationwide, a big deal. But will you ever use it again? What was the benefit? What was it good to connect with people? Did you connect with anybody that you were like, hey I'm gonna make sure I continue that? Like what were your thoughts of Twitter as a as a social media hub? Do you use it before this class? I won't, yeah. yeah. I, I personally, like, I hate LinkedIn. I think that's stupid. <laughs> I'm not in the business world. And, and so I think this is a good alternative to LinkedIn, having a professional Twitter. I think it was really cool to, like, collaborate with everyone and just get, like, so many different resources and so many different viewpoints from, like, all around the country and mm -hmm. outside of the country. So that was really cool. I know I came into class like a little sluggish and tired from my day of like being at my clinical site, but now I'm like all like hyped up. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was really cool. I mean, Twitter's pretty nice. I mean, I was swearing in the back corner for the most part of it because <laughs> like you'd be looking at one tweet and then like the whole screen would just refresh and then you'd have to go find it. <laughs> So maybe your next Twitter chat's like a slower chat. Maybe that'll be even better. <laughs> yeah, we do it next Thursday when I'm in this class again. There yeah. we go. Do you like that they say they won't participate in classes? It's going to be a mastery <laughs> yeah. chat now. Thanks, Teach Better team. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so before we get off our live video, we obviously have a lot of people watching. They're commenting like crazy. Is there any questions that we can leave in our live video that for the people either watching live or watching after the live, can kind of share their insight even further with you. Were there any questions you feel like you didn't quite get the answer to, or maybe it was a question separate from lesson planning, since you're pretty specific on lesson planning, that you wanted to ask, and that way they could respond here, and you could go find their answers in our video feed. These are all educators kind of from around the world. And Jackie says, by the way, that Twitter totally hypes you up. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, so she loves Twitter. What was the hardest part of your teacher preparation program? And, and what exactly did you do to get through that hard time? Mm -hmm. We need answers for that one. I, I guess because we're, I mean, this is all kind of part of like networking and get your name out there. Like what is probably a best way? I mean, is this the best way to sort of get your name out there? Or are there other ways to do it? Like, you know, we all want to get hired and we get our, our degrees and everything. So. So are you asking when you say like get your name out there, you mean like for a job, yeah, right? Definitely. Okay. So what's the best way to network to ensure that you get a job after school? It's a great question. Um, what's your worst parent story? Because I feel like we all have those like psycho parents out there. I just want to hear what's going on. I from you today, so. <laughs> yeah. We've all had parent moments, right? Okay. We're, I was teaching them how not to respond, I think, was kind of the story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a few mistakes. Yeah, the whole it was good. Mm -hmm. It's a learning, it was a teachable moment, friends. Mm -hmm. Teachable moment. Mm -hmm. Other questions you would love to hear answers to that our network can tune into, whether they're watching this video live or after we've streamed? Um, this might be a little off topic for this class, but like, for dual language classes where like, they start off from kindergarten from like 60%, uh, or like 90% and 10% and more and more, but it's around fourth grade is 50-50 with both languages in the classroom. Do you see that program growing? <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, should I invest in learning my native language a little bit better? Because I know like my slang, but I don't know like the proper mm -hmm. educational version of my language. What language is that? Polish. Nice. So I know um, the dialect is called Polkalaiski dialect. Mm -hmm. So I know that, but like if it's like growing, because like 
I've had a few teachers tell me that I should definitely move back up to Chicago, mm -hmm. which I don't, I, I don't, I, I want to stay out of the suburbs and stay out of the city. Mm -hmm. But like, if it's grow, if it's a growing program, I, I, I will invest in it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? What's the hardest part of NTPA? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so will you actually tell us what EdTPA is for those of people that don't know because maybe it wasn't present in their time in college? So EdTPA is the Illinois standards that all teachers have to meet. They have to record themselves, mm -hmm. go back and write a 20-page paper, let's say. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal and like 90% of the people pass, but then you have that 10% that don't. And I know Illinois has talked about getting rid of EdTPA to hopefully increase the teacher rate, mm -hmm. but at the same time... What's his face and governor won't get rid of it. <laughs> so that's a good question for like Jackie, Brandon, uh, the other Brandon, Brandon Oates, who's in here. You guys, have you done a TPA? Will you tell us a little bit about your experience? I didn't. I didn't have to do it when I was an undergrad. So that was new since my time. Um, we are getting a lot of parts or a lot of things here. Um, so Jeff says, uh, sorry, I'm not catching all the comments. Jeff says, Twitter is how I met Ray. So getting a job. There you go. That's how I met Jeff Gargas. He's my best friend. Or at least he is as I'm live on Facebook. Um, no, just kidding, Jeff. I love you. Uh, Brandon Oates says, hardest part of the teacher prep program, student teaching. However, the best part of the teacher prep program was also student teaching. So that makes sense. Tammy says, I think Twitter is used to connect with other educators. Katie Norton is in here. Hey, Katie. Uh, she says, drop off resumes in person. Be kind to the office staff. That's a huge one. And always follow up with phone calls and cards. So it's really that like the compassion part behind it, that whole piece. Uh, Jackie says, my math classes, I had to push through the those <laughs> knowing that they didn't define me. Nice, Jackie, that's awesome. That they're not gonna stop me from being a good teacher. You are in the home stretch, read out, reach out if you need anything. So Jackie is an amazing teacher um, north of where we are right now, so she'd be great to connect with. She graduated a few years ago. Jackie, are you in your second year this year? I think you are. Um, Becky says, I could not understand why teacher, um, why teachers when I was in school seemed to be so bitter. Okay. A few years in, I started to understand, but it's all about how you respond to people and events going on around you and make a conscious effort to not let yourself be that teacher. I agree with that. That's really good. Uh, Jackie says, follow everything that ISU gives you an ITPA. It will help you pass. Okay. So there's your tip. Really good, good resources. And Tammy says, Oh, I had that in California. Yes, it was tedious. It was a headache. Perfect. And Jackie says she is in year two. So we'll continue to get you some answers to your questions. But um, first and foremost, you guys did awesome. And I'm so, so proud. Um, I was very nervous for today because I know how overwhelming a Twitter check can be. And you killed it. I could not be more proud of how today went. So I really appreciate all the hard work you put in. And um, for those that went live, that was awesome. But I appreciate you guys coming in and voicing your um, opinions and being an active part of this network because this really is a great way to connect with people. Any final thoughts before we say goodnight tonight? Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. See you um, next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Um, and we'll continue to follow your comments. So thank you all. I do have a good night.